Well, hello everyone and thank you for joining us again for another episode of Leading on Monday. My name is Flori Lungu and I'm so delighted to be with you today. And I'm joined by my friend and teaching partner, Madalina Guinescu. Welcome, Madalina. Hey, Florine. Hello. Nice to be here again. Absolutely. Today, I like your attitude, right? Because we, today we're going <laughs> to talk about attitude. And uh, so, so this is our first episode from the self-leadership series, right? So we're going to cover on the next eight episodes, we're going to cover different aspects of, um, of leadership. And we know that the first person to lead is to lead ourselves. That's why we're going to talk about leadership from two perspectives, right? Either you are a leader already and how these aspects of, of uh, your leadership affects you and impacts your leadership, or you maybe are not a leader. And you, be, you want to become a leader. You want to maybe take a leadership position or, or lead a team or a project. So also, we're going to cover that aspect. So why don't you tell us, Madela, you know, why do you think attitude is important for, for leaders or for everyone? Because uh, in my perspective, uh, people uh, hear and feel your attitude more than your words. And when mm. I uh, say attitude, I'm meaning also related to your behavior. And uh, we know already that uh, there is a 97 percentage of the communication skills. It's based on the um, on ourselves, how we how we show and how we demonstrate what we want to talk about instead of the words. So words, I think there are only seven percent, if I remember correctly. So the last 93 percent of uh, of the body language and how we say things and how we use our hands and words, it's more related to what we want to transmit instead of the words individually. So when we think about attitude, this is what I'm thinking about. So be, be careful what you're saying, uh, because it's more important what, how you're saying than what you're saying. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and how, yeah, exactly. The tone of voice and, and the attitude yes. that you have towards the person. And for me, I think uh, attitude, we call it a deal breaker. The reason why I say that is because, you know, as a leader, like who would want to follow, uh, you know, someone with a bad attitude? I think there was an exercise yeah. where we were told to think about a person that we admire and then write four or five characteristics that we admire at that person, right? And when when we, when we look at, when I've done this exercise with people in workshops, most of the times the things that they put there that they admire were, were things that had to do with attitude, right? The, the, mm -hmm. the person was maybe positive and, and uh, you know, supporting and always there and and keeping their word, like things that had to do with attitude. So that's why mm -hmm. when I think about attitude, I think that you as a leader, you actually set the stage for the attitude that your people have. Like if you treat your colleagues with the right attitude and, and you know, uh, you treat them respectfully and you speak nice of other people, that's also what your people will do. And as leaders, we have that responsibility to set the attitude for, for our teams. Mm -hmm. Actually, this uh, this is uh, reminding me of uh, one TV show that I'm watching currently. It's called Suits. Mm -hmm. And it, there are a lot of great leadership lessons there. And especially when you, you look at the leaders of the company, because it's not only one, there are more people leading uh, with official title and not with official title. You can definitely tell their attitude and people can people that work with them can definitely tell their attitude if they're uh, if they enjoy being or working together or not. So we need to pay attention to this kind of situations. And this is um, my advice to anybody, especially because I'm more specific on people who want to become leaders and they are not officially leaders. So mm -hmm. they're aspiring leaders. I encourage them to watch all kinds of uh, examples like this in movies, in TV shows around them to actually see what is uh, the leadership example that you can find there and what is something that you would like to follow when you will be a leader. So is the attitude of that specific leader a good one or not? What would you do in that situation? How would you deal with that kind of situation when you don't like to play to work with some person in your company? Uh, but you still lead them, what do you do in that case? <laughs> so things right. like that, it's also related to attitude. And I definitely say that 
attitude is one basic element as you said the the basic uh, one of the basic pillars of leadership so it can be a deal breaker in in leadership yeah and, and i also see it as an ally so if you if you don't have a leadership position and you want to lead a team or you want to take a, a new opportunity in your company like you would be your ally if you have a the right kind of attitude all things yeah. being equal right People will yeah, want yeah. to work with people that have the positive attitude, right? Um, that, that's it, it, it will be an ally. If you have the right attitude, yes. doors will open for you. So yes. absolutely, if you want to become a leader, you don't have to wait until you become a leader and then say, oh, now I need to change my attitude. No, change your attitude or, or show the kind of attitude you would want to see in your leaders, right? So sometimes... Uh, having a bad manager would teach us things that we should not do, right? And we take those in and we change our attitude to uh, to show kind of the kind of leader we will want to have. Mm -hmm. And also here we should be very careful with playing uh, making mistakes because if we follow or we if we observe a leader that let's say have some lacking in, in leadership. We tend not to do the same things as they did. Yeah. But on the other hand, we might do some mistakes <laughs> because we didn't see we didn't see those kind of actions in the leader we are looking at. So we might do some mistakes on, on our own and we might be consider ourselves a bad leader in this situation. So we, we need to pay attention to, uh, okay, look at the other, look as an, at an example of leadership, but also pay attention to what mistaking, mistakes you're doing. And when we talk about attitude, uh, definitely we will talk about also failure. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. uh, all, the, all the leaders will have this kind of situations in their career. So if you're a leader, wait. Uh, well, not maybe wait, wait, it's not a good word, but expect failure. Yeah. This is something that I would like to emphasize now. Absolutely. And for me, as I probably share this some other time as well, but when you become a leader, um, you know, on one side, as you said, you have to expect failure. If you do something that you have not done before, if your team will do something that they have not done before, then you expect failure, right? Um, yes. But yes. also, as a leader, we actually give up our rights to complain. So for me, someone that, like, I had a leader once that was complaining about the things that didn't work, you know, around the office and, and, and their boss. And I said, well, wait a minute. Like, if he's complaining already and comes to the meetings with those complaints, like, what should we do as a team, right? Like, how can I be, you know, positive and results-oriented as a team member if my leader is complaining? So I say, as a leader... come with any solution, just complaining? Yeah, but... Mm. Even if... Even if you come to with solutions, right? I mean, yeah, you complain about the situations that you feel you have uh, no control over, right? Because that that's when yeah. we there is two things like someone which is concerned about a problem, right? They identify the problem and look for solutions, right? Yeah. Someone which yeah. is worried about the problem, they're bringing the problem to the surface and just, you know, they just discuss about the problem. You know, I'm worried about this. What I'm worrying about is that this might happen or, or this might happen or this might happen. Well, okay, so either that's a real risk and we should do something about it, but just worrying about something that might happen, it doesn't help. So in that situation, if the leader was complaining and bringing these worries to the table, we what what should we have done? Like in, in times of crisis or in times of uh, you know uncertainty, the leader should be the one that keeps the the foundation, right? The boat yes. stable, rather than bringing all the worries to the table. So as a leader, like from my perspective, we we should give up our rights to complain. So so in other words, like you either represent the company, you know, in front of your employees, or you represent your employees in front of the company. Either way, you should not complain. End of story, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. that is the kind of attitude that I want to see in leaders, and that's the kind of attitude that I admire in in in, in my mentors that I follow. So, for mm -hmm, me, mm -hmm. that's why I say it's a deal breaker. Like, who would want to to follow a complaining leader? 
Yeah. Like the leader should be the <laughs> one likes, that's encouraging, that, right? Yeah. Who would like that kind of person? I, I I definitely try to avoid people that are complaining. Um, but you know what? I think this is something very interesting to look at. Uh, this is something that just I just realized now. When there is there is one thing in psychology, if you don't like something other people are doing, then there might be something that you do at this like like likewise you you are doing the same thing but it's like you seeing the thing you don't want in other people so for us uh, for this example for for this example if you see other people or if you notice other people complaining watch out about your complaints if you are the one complaining <laughs> uh are you complaining is something it's well it's not a direct question for you florin but we need to pay attention to these kind of things. If if we see people around us and we observe people around us who are complaining, maybe we are doing some complaint, maybe not at work, but at home or with life, with kids, with neighbors. We can we can think of other examples. So if you if you if you observe this that you are complaining, then it will be a good opportunity for you to develop yourself as a leader in this situation and whenever you complain about something find a solution for that yeah and maybe that's a one thing that sure. we can consider and, and I, I as a matter of fact uh, my wife luna and i had an exercise at a, at a time because we were i don't know for what reason we felt like we noticed that we're kind of complaining um, mm -hmm. that was, um i don't know maybe we saw other people complaining and then like you just give that example but we said we made a a, a, a pack and say okay so every time you complain you put 100 crowns which is about 10 euros in this here in this yeah. jar right like every time you complain and, and and we were like at the beginning we were kind of keeping score and we were putting the money and then and then we say well okay so so we we gave up with the money but it was like a reminder I say are you complaining right now oh no 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 i was just saying okay good okay so what's the solution then because that was, but but you know that has to be something that uh, like you know sometimes parents do that with kids when they say well, every time you swear put the 10 10 dollars in the in the in the jar right so for yeah. us, that, that helped us change our mindset and attitude and say, okay, yes. are you complaining yes. right now? No, 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 I was just saying, okay, so is that a complaint? No, it was just a statement. Good, okay, so then, then at least <laughs> we didn't stay in that complaining mode for long, right? Because maybe it was maybe it was the weather, maybe it was the car, maybe it was the coffee, maybe it was a colleague. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was something, right? And so we realized that if we were like just spending our our time and, and, and energy going, you know, in, into that complaining more. And you know what? There's a famous quote where, where it says that life is 10%, uh, you know, what happens to you and 90% how you respond to it. And that yes. 90% is actually your attitude, right? Because yes. the challenge, uh, I believe that if we allow things outside of us, like even our colleagues, our boss, our clients, neighbors, family, to influence the way we feel, we have given our power away. So yeah. when it comes to attitude, right? Attitude means that uh, we are able to control the way we feel despite the condition or circumstances we find ourselves in. So yeah. that's, that's how I see it. Um, that's what attitude means for me. I totally agree. It's, so it's a good yeah sorry how would you then look at someone that say well, okay so i know i have i'm not you know i don't have a, an ideal attitude because i don't say bad attitude you know, it's yeah. just it's just maybe not an ideal attitude uh, if someone say okay you got me what can i do to develop a you know more positive attitude a better attitude that will help me in my leadership at home so mm -hmm. what would you say to them what would be some of the tips that you would give to them well the first tip I would say exactly what I do at the moment. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. training myself as a leader, and this is how I encourage people to do is self-observing. So okay. observe yourself as much as you can during the day. 
because you will realize oh this is a is this a complaint oh yes it is a complaint then i need to make do something with it is this a bad attitude i'm having or not an ideal attitude i'm having oh yes it is uh, did i follow the the um, the objectives i had for today yes if yes it's perfect if no why not what made me stop or what uh, didn't why didn't I do my objectives for today or my activities for today so whenever we think about uh, self-leadership is to actually observe ourselves during the day to see did I had a bad comment on somebody did I thought something bad about somebody else because even if you you might not say it not even with your body language but you might think it you might think something negative upon other people. And that attitude, like I said, it shows through your pores. It's not something you need to say or do. It's just showing when, when you despite something, of course, people will notice without you saying or doing anything. So just observe yourself. And um, first of all, what I what I learned from, from psychology is you need to you need to forgive yourself whenever you have some some things like that, that let's say, oh, I knew this rule. I shouldn't complain. I shouldn't say anything bad about somebody. Oh, I'm doing the mistake. Oh, I'm so stupid. I'm doing this over and over again. I'm not learning from my mistakes. Uh, the second point would be to actually uh, forgive yourself and realize mm -hmm. that this is just a process that you're going through. And you need to understand that, that you will do mistakes and you might do mistakes until it gets like a you uh, accustomed to you like an ordinary attitude for you to follow and then whenever you're doing this more often then you will have a habit and because of the habit everybody knows when it becomes a habit then it will be easier for you not to let's say another example not to complain not to say anything bad about other people and also with leadership if you're studying leadership and you try as much as you can to practice the tips or the the good practices the best practices of leadership with your own life uh, even at work or even in personal life then uh, sooner or later you will become a good leader because you are doing this as a habit absolutely that's so good so these are my advice yeah that's a good um, when i think about developing as a as a leader and developing a you know a, the the attitude of a leader um an example that i really like it's it's that kind of mindset that i call whatever it takes mindset or whatever it takes attitude and and this is you know again well you might say florin that really whatever it takes but if you think about a leader and and if you are if you are in a competition for example right if we play a sport don't you want to be on the winning team? Yeah, that I, want would. On, I want to be on the winning team. And and how do you, how do you win most of the times? Is is with, with the coach or a leader that has that whatever it takes kind of attitude? And 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 this comes with some of the some things here. So I listed some things for us. So whatever it takes attitude means that uh, we don't play the victim card, like we could very easily like now you probably hear that in my voice that i'm not at my best you know i've been sick but i don't i don't use that as an excuse to cancel for example i could have canceled this show right we say okay madalina i'm sorry i don't feel well so i i don't think we're going to have a show today but i don't play I, I don't i don't play that card right and and we don't use things that um w would give us an excuse right to play the victim because you cannot win when you play the victim and if you yeah. play the victim, I, I, playing the victim means also like blaming other people. Like if you are a leader, and you, even if you're not the leader, but you don't take responsibility for for the things you do and then blame other people, then of course your your people feel okay. So if now they're not the leader, but they're blaming other people, think about when they will be a leader. Who who would they blame, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they'll blame the team. Uh, Again, this kind of person takes the bull by the by the horns, right? You know, there is a problem. Let's do something about the problem. And I think you you mentioned that in in the in one of the past episodes when you gave that example with with the with a cat being you know trapped in in a, in a box with, with yeah, poison and, and and us spending the time to discuss you know how did the cat end up there and then you know all the 
philosophy about what happened yeah. instead of looking at okay so what do we do from here what's the solution right so yeah. that means we take responsibility and we look now for solutions now this is done already you mm -hmm. know we cannot change that okay let's see what do we do from here but that's whatever it takes attitude then we look at um, as i said giving up the right to complain this is again we don't complain and we don't use us an excuse and we look for solutions um we put we put ourselves in other people's shoes right so in order for us to understand the bigger picture and to see you know how what we say and do impact other people we we want to be you know in a position where we see their perspective too right so someone that has whatever it takes attitude they put themselves in the other person's perspective like if i go in this meeting with this attitude how would that my team feel right yeah. how would my manager think about what i do right now will, will will this help me to actually reach my goal and get that position or would that hinder me so mm -hmm. we are mindful of the other person's perspective and this person also exceed expectations like when you know john maxwell says that the highest expectation that um that that he placed himself on himself expectations that are higher than anyone else like most people promise mm -hmm. things and and maybe they deliver what they promise but very few people over deliver and so yeah. if every time we go the extra mile every time we go and do something more every time we we bring a little bit more to the table every time i meet someone i bring something i bring a gift i bring a book why because I want to exceed the expectation. They say, well, I didn't expect it, you to bring a book. Well, of course, I have no obligation. It's just my it's my pleasure. But exceeding expectations, you know, helps us to build that kind of attitude. And, um, and another mindset, it's being always grateful for what we have, but never satisfied. So if you're yeah. never satisfied, means, means that sometimes we might still complain, like we have... We have, you know, like the the children having the the child having, you know, three toys and and missing the fourth one, and they're complaining about the one that they missed rather than being grateful for the the three that they have. So sometimes we could also be that way that we're still looking for yeah. things and 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 we want more, we want more, we want more, but we're never grateful for what we have. So I think that's these are some you know rules guidelines that have helped me and uh, that helps other people as well to to have this kind of attitude right yes i would add to this one just one more thing that uh, i found from maxwell from john maxwell which is creating a circle of success sorry a cycle of success it's okay. still a circle okay so it's so, related so to what, what do you mean by that can you explain yes that? uh Exactly. I, I would I would explain. So when we think about the cycle of success, we think about what should we do to actually increase and develop our attitude in leadership perspective. So mm -hmm. first of all, we need to expect failure. So we need to find out some some ways to overdo the failure. OK, expect failure and see what you need to do. But what you need to do, the first step would be it's a five five step cycle okay first, five, first step would be to test a lot okay. that mm -hmm. means acting a lot that means failing a lot <laughs> so actually I, uh, doing some action a lot of action is the first step so when you do the action then you will test is, is this is this okay is this a success step or is, is this a failure step so in this situation, we go to the after this step, we go to the second one, which is the fail a lot. So as many times as we test, the, the proportion will be equal to the failure. So as many times as we as we try and fail, it's actually building the experience of uh, improving the process. So whenever we think about that, we need to embrace failure in, in this case. So test failure or fail a lot, then the third step would be to learn. So after testing, after failing, then you need to learn because if you test and fail and you do it all over again, <laughs> the same way is not you improving at all. So after that, you need to learn from the failure. You need to learn how to improve. Then 
actually had have the improve and implement the improve in the process. And afterwards, you need to re-enter the game, which means to go around and start testing again, start failing again, start learning again and improving again and re-enter the cycle. So right. that uh, those are the five uh, the five steps of the success cycle. Nice. So testing a lot, failing a lot, learning a lot. Yes. What was the fourth one? Improve. Improve. And so you we... learn what you you learn what you did wrong, and then you improve the process. Sure. Yeah. And then Absolutely. if you improve the process, it's like uh, you improve the whole game or the whole cycle, and then you do it all over again. You after you improved, after you re-entered and you did the actions, then you need to test it. This is is this action a good one or a failure one? Right. If it's a failure one, then we fail. Then we learn the fa about the failure. Then we improve the process, and then we do it all over again. Nice. So it's uh, it, uh, it, with experience, it will be easier for people to to do. And I have one example here because uh, he actually said, "Sorry, go on." Uh, Maxwell in in in. Um, in a conference that he had last week in in Romania, mm -hmm. he was actually telling us one example that I was I was a little intrigued about. It was related to one flight that he had in the okay. past. So it was a um, it was a problematic flight because the, um, at the landing they had some difficulties in um, landing. Yes, yeah? so the plane couldn't land in a proper way, and in a matter of milliseconds not seconds in a, in a matter of milliseconds the pilot just decided because they realized the pilot realized that the plane was trying to to land this way on one wheel or something in a matter of milliseconds is just from here trying to land it was it went up like up for good up in the air and Maxwell, at the end of this, after kissing the earth, after kissing the pilot, like, <laughs> you know, everybody was um, relieved that they, they survived this, um, this uh, situation. He actually was intrigued and asked the pilot, how did you do, how, how did you, in, in a millisecond, how did you get, uh, how did you take this, uh, this decision just like that, that fast? And he said, uh, well, I practiced this decision for many, many times before. Well, um, so I practiced, but I have not. Taken no, it. he, no, no, no. He was. He didn't do in in the real life. He wasn't. He he didn't. Ha he didn't have this kind of situation in real life when he was piloting. He was driving the flying the plane, but whenever he said, "I'm a I'm a pilot," and I will go through everything that might go wrong when i fly the plane everything mm -hmm. all the situations that i can think of talking maybe to talking to other pilots well this is from from me yes but mm -hmm. here's what he said that he he said i was practicing every situation that might go wrong with the plane so i know exactly what i need to do in that millisecond so what decision to make in that millisecond that might make a difference between life and death for the for the people in the plane so he's not like he's making one decision on the spot because he actually practiced a lot behind yeah. in the past he had so many many examples where he thought okay what if my plane uh should or was the situation that my plane only could land like this what should i do in this situation so he he analyzed the situation and he did he did one simulation maybe and he he decided that whenever the plane the plane might might land this way, he needs to go up with the plane. So, wow. um, so in other words, has been in that cycle many many times, maybe in simulations or everything, and he knew exactly what to do. Uh, and, yes, right, because he had the right attitude towards learning and towards preparing yes. and being prepared for any situation. Yes, yes, yes. So be prepared for any situation that might come. Uh, it's not like you're attracting the situation, the bad situation in your life, uh, because I, I had this dilemma. Uh, people say, don't think about negative stuff because you might attract them. And I said to myself, and then I realized that the pilot was on the same page with me. Maybe 
you never know maybe something like that will happen so instead of you just taking a decision on the spot just practice before that so you know that you will make the best decision when the time comes so or if the time comes yeah but so this is a, a difference between yeah it's a difference between being prepared and you know going to a negative spiral right yeah you know, he yeah. didn't he didn't play that in his mind all over again what happens but he knew what to do when it was needed yeah yeah this is this is the idea and this is a good example in leadership practice as much as you can maybe in your mind maybe discuss with other people what is the best uh, solution for any leadership problem so you you are prepared so what should i do if i start complaining in front of my team and i know this is not a good thing what should i do if i don't like a person in my team uh, what should I do if I don't keep my promise? So things like that. You you need to practice that a lot. And of course, you will be bad at the beginning. But the more you practice, the more you will uh, become uh, very good in leadership because you develop yourself. This is about self-leadership. This is the most important step. Absolutely. All right. I think we are over time already for today. But I think these <laughs> discussions are, are, uh, are very interesting. So uh, what is the topic for next week then? Uh, from what I remember, is character. Absolutely. Uh, let me check here. Is character? Yes. To, uh, next week we will discuss about character. Why is a pillar in like a basic pillar in leadership, and how we can develop as uh, how can we develop the the character if we are an inspiring leader, and also when we are already a leader and we need to build upon our character to first check if it's a good if we have a good character or not. And then find out what we can do to improve ourselves in the character, so we we become we beca we we become very very good leaders. Absolutely. All right. I look forward to see you again uh, next week, and uh, everyone watching, see you again next Monday. Thank you for tuning in. Take care. Bye bye. Bye everybody.